Have you ever wondered why we breathe oxygen to survive? Why don't we breathe carbon dioxide or hydrogen gas? The answer lies in the process of cellular respiration. Specifically, oxygen is necessary for what is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Today, we are going to explore what oxidative phosphorylation is and how it utilizes oxygen to provide energy for the cell. Oxidative phosphorylation is part of the cellular respiration process, which takes place inside the mitochondria. It is the final step in cellular respiration, just after the citric acid cycle. It is commonly broken down into two steps, the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. The electron transport chain is made up of a series of proteins and organic molecules embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The important parts of the chain are complex 1, 2, 3, and 4. The electron transport chain is initiated by NADH and FADH2 molecules, which donate high energy electrons to complexes 1 and 2. The electrons then travel down the electron transport chain through a series of redox reactions. However, a transport molecule is necessary because the complexes are stationary. The first transport molecule is ubiquinone. Ubiquinone takes the electrons from complexes 1 and 2 to complex 3. There, another transport molecule, cytochrome C, takes the electrons from complex 3 to complex 4. The final step of the electron transport chain is where oxygen comes in. Oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor. We breathe oxygen so that we have molecules that can properly neutralize the free electrons created by the electron transport chain. Electrons split O2 molecules and turn them into water, and the electron transport chain is complete. A good way to visualize the electron transport chain is to imagine it as a railway system. FADH and NADH2 are the Ubers, dropping off the passengers, the electrons, at the train station, complex 1 and 2. The first train, ubiquinone, takes the passenger electrons from the first station, complexes 1 and 2, to the second station, complex 3. The electron passengers then change trains onto cytochrome C. This takes them to their final destination, complex 4. The electrons leave the station and arrive at their final destination, an oxygen molecule. The second part of oxidative phosphorylation is chemiosmosis. As the electrons move down the electron transport chain, energy is released. This energy is used to pump protons across the inner membrane. This creates a chemical gradient, in which the protons want to diffuse back into the matrix. To do this, they must pass through ATP synthase. This channel protein is also an enzyme, and as protons pass through it, it spins and synthesizes ATP from ADP. ATP is a high energy molecule that can be used to carry out many cell functions. Another way to visualize chemiosmosis is to imagine a bunch of helium balloons as protons in a room with a ceiling in the middle as the inner membrane. The electron transport chain creates the energy to move the proton balloons below the ceiling. However, the proton balloons want to pass back through to the other side, but they can only do so by traveling through a special trap door. This is the ATP synthase. When the balloons do pass through the ATP synthase, they move a mechanical rotor, which produces energy. Upon completion of chemiosmosis, the chemical gradient has been rebalanced, and the process can repeat itself. In total, Six NADH and two FADH2 molecules are consumed by oxidative phosphorylation to produce 30 to 34 ATP molecules. Oxidative phosphorylation is an aerobic process, meaning it requires oxygen, and it is much more efficient at synthesizing ATP than its anaerobic counterparts, such as fermentation. So oxygen is needed to carry out oxidative phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation is needed to synthesize energy most efficiently in a cell. This explains why oxygen is so important to us and many other organisms. And that's why we breathe oxygen to survive.